Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Engineering Dynamics. In this video, we will be talking about the one-dimensional solution of the Helmholtz equation. So we will be having a cylinder and we have some air that is vibrating. And we will use the Helmholtz equation that we derived in the last video to solve for the eigenfrequencies of our system, so of the eigenfrequencies of our air. So let's jump back once and look at our Helmholtz equation. So we have a derivative in time twice, plus is equal to our speed of sound times a double derivative of our pressure. For now, we will only talk about the one dimensional solution. So we have no y and we have no z. So this is our solution that we can insert right here and we will get this equation. Now, we assume a harmonic solution for our problem. So we again perform separation of variable where we have this as the pressure. So we have pressure just dependent on our position and modulated with a time function. Now we know, or now we can insert that in here and derive our uh, equation of motion. Uh, not our equation of motion, but our differential equation, our ordinary differential equation, because now we switch from a time derivative and a space derivative to only simply having a time derivative, uh, sorry, a space derivative. So derive the pressure twice with time, you get omega here, omega squared, because we have omega coming from here. So we switched from sine to cosine, from co cosine to minus sine. That's why we put them both on the left-hand side. And then we can derive it, our function, our pressure function twice with x. Now we have to assume a function that will fit our boundary conditions. So for now, because we're solving a one-dimensional solution, and we know that we have some oscillation, we propose that our pressure is simply a cosine plus b sine. And we want to find out what that k is. So we can derive this function twice, and we will see that we have a k coming here. So we have a k coming from here and a k coming from here. So we derive it once, we have a k in the, in the front, if we derive it again, because we have to do two derivatives, we have a k squared. So we will see that c squared, k squared, plus omega, here we have the functions, is equal to zero. So now we know that we have omega squared, sorry for that. And now we know that our k in that function is our eigenfrequency divided by the speed of sound. Now we can talk about our boundary condition. So the boundary condition, when we talk about a, a tube, we will say that it is for now closed open. So we have closed and open, open. We say that our, at the end or at the beginning of our tube, better to say, the velocity is equal to zero. Why is the velocity at the closed end always zero? Well, because nature doesn't like voids, and if we have some position, uh, some velocity in this direction, there will be a void at that point. So we're saying at this position, the particles can't move. And what did we say earlier when we derived the Helmholtz equation? We said a particle doesn't move then when the force of the right side of the particle and the left side of the particle are equal. And that is that the pressure of the on the right hand side and on the left hand side is equal, which again, is equal to zero pressure gradient. We can have a pressure increasing and decreasing, but the pressure gradient that we're having right here, that one is zero. And at the open end of our tube, we say that the pressure is zero. Why do we not say that our pressure is P zero? Well, because we are now solving for the perturbation of our system and we just say, well, we can add a equal pressure everywhere and this will be still the same. So we're solving for pressure is equal to zero at the open end. So now, because we know our equation right there, let me actually get rid of all of this. So we know that the pressure gradient at zero must be zero. So we're not moving. We derive it once, we get a cosine here and a sine. We insert a zero because we're at x equal to zero. This will be one but we need it to be zero, so b is equal to zero, and this is gone. 
then we are left with this equation. So, and the pressure at the end of the tube, so right here, must be equal to zero. So we could say, well, pressure is equal to zero, then A is also equal to zero. But this is the trivial solution that we are not interested in. Because if we're saying A is zero, we're saying that, well, the pressure is zero everywhere, everywhere, and we have no vibration. And this is not what we want. We want to see the, for which K, because L is our fixed length, for which K is the cosine zero. So if we have a cosine, it looks like this. We can say that the cosine is zero if k is one plus two n divided by l pi divided by two. So we already know that if k is that solution, k can have n going from one or from zero to infinity because we're in a continuous system. We can say that if k is that, we can insert our k here reformulate our term to get the omega, and then we found the eigenfrequency of that system with a closed and open end. So we have closed open is equal to the speed of sound times this k that we found before, right here. This is just a one-dimensional solution of our system. We can do the same thing when we propose a, or, or when we're having a 2D solution, a uh, 2D problem. So if we look at the two-dimensional case, we again have our closed open tube. But in this case, we have a zero speed here because we have a wall. We have on the lower side, we have a wall. And on the upper side, we have a wall. So the derivative is zero right here. Derivative is zero at y is equal to zero. And the derivative is equal at y is equal to h. So h is our height. We have, again, the same proposed solution as before, the separation of variable, but now we, we are talking about a 2D space. So this right here, only the Z is gone. So this is why we have this solution. We propose a function that fits our boundary condition, that is A cosine times Kx and cosine Ky times Y. Then if we derive it twice, so we insert that right there, we derive it twice and re -so and repackage our, uh, our term, we will get that the eigenfrequency is equal to kx uh, c times kx squared plus ky squared. Now we solve for the boundary conditions to get our kx's and ky's. So we know that the pressure at the end of our tube, so right there for each y, this is the end of our tube, for each y is equal to zero, so for all y. And we get that kx is 1 plus 2n divided by l times p, uh, uh, p divided by 2. So exactly the same thing that we got from the 1D solution in the x direction. For the y direction, we have a cosine times sine, because now we derive it once, because we said that we don't want to have any speed on the upper side of our tube. So we say that the pressure gradient is zero at that point. And we, uh, this will lead us to k is equal to m per i divided by h. And m is not the mass, don't confuse it with the mass, it's the order. And now we know that we can get the eigenfrequency from here to there just by inserting our found case. And we will have this term for our eigenfrequency. And for each m and n, we will find a solution. So for example, we can say that at first, the pressure in the y direction is zero, so no pressure. And we have like a pressure gradient that's ugly, a pressure gradient that looks like this. Then we can say, well, we can choose one sign in the y direction and choose two signs, uh, or a full sign in the x direction. And this is basically a overlapping. So by choosing the m and n, we're saying how many curves we want in our pressure. I hope this video gave you a better understanding on how to work with the Helmholtz equation and solve a system for a 1D system and a 2D system. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you next time.